a lot of times we go into situations where they're like, okay, if you want to enter into corporate America, you need to present yourself in a certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to, for lack of better words, assimilate yeah. to mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. Eurocentric. Pretty much the word. Yeah. <laughs> Not even just corporate America. When I was in high school, I'll never forget that Six Flags Over Georgia released this statement. They were like, this summer, if you come to Six Flags, you will not be hired if you have, listen to these haircuts, <clears throat> an afro, dreadlocks, cornrows, or braids. Wow. And I was like, mm, this mm. feels targeted. So that's not, not even corporate, like working at Six, Six Flags, Flags, a summer job, you know, at the Tilty Twirl. Yes. <laughs> you know it, what I mean? it, it, It's in, in so many ways that it's such a, an open attack on our natural black beauty yeah you know we, literally all the styles that you named are natural and protective hairstyles that you know we have developed over centuries as ways to mm -hmm. promote hair growth to keep mm -hmm. our hair healthy you know to keep it manageable because we know you know that it takes work and so it's so awkward and confronting when we go out there in the world and people tell us that the way that our natural hair our curly coils yeah. grow out of our scalp mm. is not seen as being presentable because to them it feels like it's untamable. Right. And I feel like that that presents to them that like, okay, this black person might be a little bit too much. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then I feel like we've now kind of come into this like period in pop culture where socially it is unacceptable to sit there and try and critique the way that a black person naturally looks. And in so many ways, I feel like People have co-opted mm -hmm. what is naturally ours, and mm -hmm. we run into a lot of instances of appropriation. Mm -hmm. And I feel like specifically in this last decade that it's become something that has been a wider conversation. And I guess I just want to like throw it back to the girls on the table. Like, how is it, how do you feel when you go out there? in the world and you see somebody that is not of the community, that's not of our experiences out there wearing and donning and putting on something that, you know, feels personal. Like, let's just talk about hair. Cause I feel like black hair is so personal, yeah. you know? And so when you go out there and you see a non-black person, you know, out there expressing themselves, you know, doing like, you know, uh, uh, like cornrows braided to the back, mm -hmm. you know, and and you know, because like now the girls all love to throw on the, the lace fronts and they love to like all of the styles baby that hair. we see. The baby, hair, <laughs> baby hairs all alone. Loose and, and, and when we think about the way that let's like just baby hairs alone, the way that black women took something that you know we all understand could be just as simple as like breakage uh -huh. and like hair that does not grow healthy because of like the type of uh, tension that it's. Mm -hmm exposed to, mm -hmm. to then take those hairs that otherwise would be considered ugly and turn them into beautiful swirls and curls mm -hmm. that present themselves, you know, in such an artistic way. So when you go out there and you see, you know, non-black women with those baby hairs like laid down, you're just so like, where did that come from? Right. Mm -hmm. Did your mom teach you that?